All right, we are here at a really cool new shop that I just discovered here in town in Colorado. We are at the Golden Curiosity Shop. Here is our owner, proprietor, uh, enthusiast, passionist, whatever you want to call him. Luke, how are you doing? Uh, I am doing great. Yeah, business is good. That's great. Yeah, that's actually, a, 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 I know we were just talking right beforehand. You said you've been just crazy all day. Yeah, absolutely. This is only my 11th day in business, so very new and still trying to find my rhythm. But uh, I had all these projections and uh, I brought a book and a movie on my first day thinking maybe just one person would right. come in. And instead, I've been running around so much I can't sit down. So it's a good problem to have. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, yeah that's uh, that's the the best bad problem. That's that's what it is right there. Yeah. So how would you kind of so it's a curiosity shop and, you know, behind us, we have the really cool uh, specimens and both wet and the taxidermy and the pinned insects and anthropods, but you have a whole lot of other stuff in here too. How'd you get started with all of this? So I'm just a naturally curious person and Fair curious enough. people are my favorite kind of people. Fair enough. Uh, so I spend a lot of time just Googling everything I can and learning and especially things to do with science. Uh, so my favorite of course is physics. Uh, that's like, that's the best science, uh, <laughs> but it's hard to put a black hole on a shelf. Uh, but the biological uh, displays are always really impressive. So I s just started collecting and started pinning and going from there. Cool. So you said started pinning. So you do all of the pinning here in the store? Uh, yeah, I do all the pinning. Uh, I do all the glass domes. I make the wet specimens too. Uh, I make a bunch of uh, like meteorite displays, ferrofluids. Um, all the skull mounts, I do all that too. And then my cousin uh, makes these wonderful terrariums for me. Wow, that's really impressive too. Yeah, she is very talented. So do you give her the, the products that you have and then she just kind of goes nuts with it? I don't like to step on her creativity. Fair so enough. what I do is <laughs> I, I take her to uh, certain stores and I just let her pick out whatever her creative inspiration desires. And then I will bring her back here and let her pick something out of the bug box, which I'm sure you'll see in a second. Cool. And uh, let her creative juices flow. So. so that's really cool. All right, let's see some of your cool so stuff. the bug box, as we mentioned before, right? Yes, this is the bug box. So this is what I use to get ahead on my pinnings, and uh, everything that's in here can be purchased for a commission piece. So people can come in and pick out that moth, and they want it glued to that skull in this terrarium, or they want it in a black frame or a glass dome, oh, cool. and they can build their own uh, display, just like building an ice cream cone at 31 Flavors, but out of creepy dead stuff. That's really cool. So yeah. when you do the pinning, do you put it here first? Uh, I do, and then I also keep a stockpile in back. Okay. Uh, so sometimes if they choose one that uh, may be a little less than perfect, I'll go get a perfect one out of the back That's right. and make it right. Cool. So. Do you know like most of the species that you're that you're messing with? I do not have them all memorized, but I take excellent notes. Okay, cool. Because <laughs> I, I I am big on snakes. A little bit about lizards, amphibians. I'm not as strong on, and definitely not really large on any and all invertebrates. But I see some really cool ones on here. Like, I don't know what kind of moth that is, but I love... These are actually the same. It's oh, okay. a leaf mimic. That's, yes, so that's the best. Yes, exactly. So when the leaf, or wings close, it looks just like a dead leaf. They actually play possum, too. So you can flick them, and they'll just play dead. And then if you back up a few feet, they'll fly away. These are the saw-nosed lanternfly from Peru. They've got a unique little face. Okay, that is really cool. And I, yeah, oh, these uh, giant moths are atlas moths, yep. and they hold the world record for wingspan. They can be up to like nine, nine and a half inches. That's so cool. And then I, the little orb weavers are so cool. And... Yeah, and then my little uh, Lisa Frank moths here. These are uh, sunset moths from Madagascar. So cool. Do you know what kind of the, the jet black and red ones are? They gave me the name in Latin, and Fair I enough. cannot pronounce I, it. <laughs> I will not hold that against you at yeah. all. When I talk to tarantula people, I know the common names mostly. Yeah. I, I, I will say that I'm definitely a novice when it comes to any of all of that, and so I know the list of butterfly and moths are just... It's Absolutely, yeah. The colloquial names are a lot easier to remember, but in this case, they did not give me one. Okay. So uh, I'm not going to attempt to pronounce the Latin name. Ah, uh, that's totally fine. I just think it's really <laughs> cool because yeah, it's I don't know a whole lot about them, and so whenever I see something that like really catches my eye, like I know that's a hawk moth. I know that much. Yeah, that 
That, of course, is most famous because of Silence of the Lambs. Yes. And because of that, they are very coveted. They are hard to get a hold of, and when you find them, they are incredibly expensive. I believe I it. had about five of them, and they went incredibly fast. Hmm. Every, every curiosity shop, reptile shop, whatever it is, has to have a resident pet, right? Yeah, so I've got two in here. These are my mascots, Watson and Crick. The one that we're seeing right now is Watson Crick likes to hide. Uh, these are axolotls uh, from freshwater lakes in Mexico. And those little trees poking out behind their necks there are actually their gills. So these guys are actually, they're endangered, uh, but they are making a comeback in the pet industry for people like me. But more importantly, uh, scientists like to breed them because they regenerate like nobody's business. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're studying them for anti-aging. And if their names, Watson and Crick, sound familiar, that's because Watson and Crick are the fellows that discovered the DNA double helix. And Crick was famously tripping on LSD when the shape appeared before him. That's why I named the glow-in-the-dark one after Crick, because they are both magical beings. I love it. I and, love it so much. And Crick, uh, let's see. I forgot what I was saying. Oh, there he goes. This the discovery of the gen the human genome and oh yeah absolutely so of course uh there is another narrative which i give credit for uh, here on the nameplate um but they had a female lab assistant named rosalind franklin who did most of the work for the dna uh, double helix and that being said it is a little suspicious of the legend that it just appeared before him while he was tripping on uh, LSD, so he maybe just found it in her filing cabinet. And uh, <laughs> if Crick turns out to be a female, I'm definitely changing his name to Rosalind, would be her name. And uh, yeah, and the reason he actually glows in the dark, or she perhaps glows in the dark, we won't be able to tell the gender for sure for a few more months yet. Uh, but the reason they glow in the dark is because of something called the green fluorescent protein. And the green fluorescent protein is present in them naturally, but geneticists flip the switch on in the parents and then they inherit it uh, when they are born. Uh, so the whole thing comes full circle to Rosalind, Watson, and Crick. That's, I, like, when I, when I said that I was a little bit of a history buff, when you very first told me their names, I was like, oh my gosh, yeah, you got it. that's hilarious. Yeah. Like, that's the most appropriately named thing I've heard. That's amazing. <laughs> This is a display case full of all sorts of fun things, mostly not biological. That's okay. But I've got stuff from all over in here, and this piece will be my favorite. This little tiny gold fleck in here is actually a piece of Kapton foil from the command module Columbia from the Apollo 11 mission that took us to the moon in 1969. So this actually protected the astronauts' uh, uh, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins from like the depths of outer space on their historic mission to the moon. Now again, I'm not the biggest like human anthropologist, scientist, really cool guy, but that's really cool. Yeah, I was gonna say, but I bet you've heard of them. No, that's My really cool. Michael Collins passed away uh, recently mm -hmm. and his nephew actually came in here on my first week of business and he promised to bring back a box of astronaut memorabilia that we can geek out over. He doesn't want to sell it, which I don't blame him. That's, that's uh, still really cool. But yeah, I'm really excited. I keep looking out the window waiting for him to come back. That's amazing, man. I have authentic Mars rocks and real moon rocks too. The first thing I did when I got that was I popped it out of the case and I held it in my hand because who wouldn't want to touch a piece of it? That rock has the constitution of cigar ash. It just fell right apart. So oh I like Lord. pinched it back together and that's the one in my personal collection at home. I warn customers though before they make the same mistake I did. And is that both of them or just the, the moon rock? I did not try the Mars rock after okay. I did the moon rock. Fair enough. That is, <laughs> yeah. That's really cool. But if you buy it, it's totally up to you if you want to pull them out of there. I have pieces of the Berlin Wall. This is for the Pink Floyd fans, complete oh, with graffiti. Oh, man. I get these straight from a museum in Germany, which is why the little name tag in there is all in German. That is really cool. Yeah, also totally into history, too. I don't spread it around as much, but that is a literal, this is all literal pieces of history. It's all gone. <laughs> I've got this right here. Ooh. is a fossilized giant sloth vertebrae from the Ice Age. Do you know which kind of giant sloth? 
I do not. Okay, sorry. I know the first one that everyone thinks of is Megatherium, like the big, big one. Yeah. But there were smaller ones. Yeah, as there well. were smaller ones they were all megafauna though yes Massive they were yes yeah. i'm very different than the sloths so yeah. this you may have heard of fulgurite fulgurite is the glass that forms when lightning strikes the sand of a beach and it vitrifies the sand mm -hmm. so this is very similar this is called trinitite and trinitite was formed in the belly of a mushroom cloud at uh, the trinity test site from the manhattan project the first time man split the atom so it uh, sucks the earth up into this mushroom cloud and the heat just melts it into this lightly radioactive glass. Uh, it's about as radioactive as a banana, so it's totally harmless. Uh, but Robert Oppenheimer, Richard Feynman, Enrico Fermi, some of the world's most prolific physicists were present when this rock so was So these finished. are Campodocilio meteorites. And that is the oldest rock you'll ever hold. It's four and a half billion years old and was formed when the solar system was still forming, when the Earth was coming together. That is insane. They have a history as bizarre as any Indiana Jones movie. And if you'd like to hear it, you can come down here and I will tell you all about it. I highly recommend that you do that. It's a crazy story. I love it. So this is the tongue-eating isopod. This thing, it's got a cute little dopey face, but it is made out of pure nightmares. So what this thing does is it will swim in through a fish's gills and then sever the blood supply to the tongue, which makes it wither and fall off. Now a little stub will remain and this guy will latch onto it with those little vicious hook feet and he will live in the fish's mouth for the rest of his life just drinking its blood and eating the scrap food that the fish All right, eats. so these little devices are Tesla coils. And Tesla coils will power a light bulb in your hand without plugging it into anything. And in fact, they are powerful enough that they can even light a whole tube. So that little purple stuff at the top there, that's plasma. And it's around 6,000 degrees. And what it's doing is it's ionizing the air around it, stripping it of the electrons. And as the gas heats up, it expands, which creates a shock wave that we hear as that little faint crackle. It's also the reason why you hear thunder when lightning strikes. And if we're lucky, we're going to get your body to make that same crackling sound with electricity here in just a second on my Van de Graaff machine. So this thing is a Van de Graaff generator. It's over 400,000 volts. And it can also light up a light bulb without plugging it into anything. So we'll go ahead and uh, set you up and see if we can get your hair to stand straight up. Going to have you put your hands on right there. Lots of contact, lots of skin. Let's see. There you, yeah, yeah, there you go, your banks. So this thing is over 400,000 volts, right? By comparison, a wall outlet is only 120 volts. So this thing is about 3,500 times stronger than a wall outlet, as measured by voltage. That's at a very low amperage, so it's totally safe to handle. But uh, what's happening is this thing is filling you up with electricity, and that electricity is trying to get to the ground. But it can't because I have you standing on this milk crate, right? So instead, you're just filling up with electrons that are permeating your whole body, each one of your different multicolored hairs, and because the electrons are the same charge, they repel each other, which is why your hair stands up. And if I get a little close, I can seal those electrons and send your hair back down, right? Static rainbow unicorn. <laughs> so now, uh, what I want you to do is take your right hand off, okay. and just, you hear that crackle? Yeah. That's the same thing over here on this Tesla coil. So that's, that's actually electricity. It's the same thing you hear when you walk under a high voltage power line. And if they were pitch, pitch black in here, you'd see your fingernails are glowing purple with the same electricity. So this is the workshop. This is where all the magic happens, where I make the skull mounts. I actually got a little plaque here. I'm getting ready to build a uh, skull mount for this roe deer skull from Poland, complete with a brass rod and engraved nameplate. 
I also make some of the wet specimens here, although the majority of that I do outside in my backyard at home just for the safety of the chemicals involved. Uh, I also have all of my frames and domes and moss ready for anybody that wants to buy anything out of the bug box, so I can go ahead and get that together real quick. That's really cool. And then over here is where all the pinning happens on my little picnic table, and right behind it are the power tools. So I, I will not mock the picnic table. A lot of work gets done on those. Oh, absolutely. And it's the only thing that fits. I had a big oak table, but uh, it was comical trying to push it through the French door, so it had to go. <laughs> All right. Well, this has been really cool. I love these little shops, too. And I, I say little. There's a bunch of stuff in here that's so cool. Thank you. I just love the variety of, you know, it's just like, as I, I think I kind of said it before, it's just this amalgamation of all these cool, like, little things that are their own little niche interest that just can be shared with everybody, and I just absolutely love it. Yeah, if you got a sense of curiosity, this is the place to embrace it. No, absolutely, yeah. It's like, I can't imagine where else I could go to get some wet specimens, see some cool species, see some fireballs, and then uh, have a fun little snack. Oh, yee. Have you eaten a spider before? <laughs> okay. I have not. Is it fl it's not flaky at all? You just kind of... It's kind of like a hairy saltine cracker. A hairy saltine cracker. Okay. <laughs> so I should do like they one... They are high in protein, low in fat, zero carbs. It'd be great for keto. Great for keto? And great for the planet. Because they have uh, like all the equipment you take to raise them are uh, super low tech. You don't need big tractors or anything like that. You can raise them pretty much in a closet under a light bulb. Yeah. So uh, they're good for the you. They're good for the planet. Everybody wins. Okay. Come on out. Oh, no, I lost a leg. There's seven more. Yeah, that is true. All right. Here we go. Should I start with the leg or? I would get a, get, maybe get a couple good stills too. Here we go. Yeah. All right. So we'll start with the leg. We'll take it nice and slow. Ready? Ready. All right, here we go. All right. Yeah, Harry Saltine. Yeah. There's not a whole lot there. <laughs> All right, here we go. What do you think, guys? Mike Rowe, eat your heart out. It sounds delicious, though. Like, that is the perfect crunch. It's so stale. <laughs> <laughs> no, they are dehydrated and lightly salted. Preserves them and gives them a hint of flavor. You know, I should probably get a bottle of hot sauce to leave out here. You first. should. That'd be yeah. really good with this. All right, here we go. Last part. Ready? Fangs and all. <laughs> all right. And down the hatch. <laughs> well done, sir. You are now a certified entomophagist. <laughs> so if anybody is in Colorado or making their trip through, um, where can we find you on social media? On I do have Facebook and Instagram at the moment. It's the Golden Curiosity Shop for both of them. Cool. Uh, I got a cat skull for a logo, so that helps me stand out. Yes, it absolutely does. I was like, what is this? And then, yep, and then I had to reach out, which was really cool. So I'm go, glad you did. Yep, so go check them out. Instagram, Facebook. If you're in Colorado, come to Golden. Number one, just come to Golden, period. It's a really cool city. And absolutely check these guys out. 100% recommend. Come learn about really cool science and facts. I 100% learned a whole lot so today. this was an absolutely amazing shop um, i know that sometimes it can seem almost a little macabre in some places and you know to a fair degree that is correct you know there is a bit of the macabre aspect of this but you know there's quite a bit of crossover like i've mentioned before um with our reptile community as well as this kind of taxidermy-esque uh like little niche hobby as well um, I know I'm certainly interested in it to a fair degree, as well as quite a few other people into it. Both the, the wet specimens, the skulls, the the cleaned, uh, reassembled skeletons, as well as the new kind of thing where they have these really cool terrariums that have the skull and as well as, you know, the pinned insects and everything else that's built around there. It looks really cool. It's like this kind of like circle of life aspect contained in a beautiful glass case. It's really, really cool. Um, and in addition to that, you know, Luke has 
a really cool passion for science just in general. And he, this way, he kind of gets to, you know, demonstrate it a little bit to the rest of the world in small little aspects. Like the store itself is this really kind of cool combination of museum gift shop and fun taxidermy place, as well as just kind of like educational facility as well he has a wide knowledge of a bunch of different really cool subjects um and the fact that he kind of assembles all of these things including this really fun uh magnetic uh magnetic metal in a jar is really cool he just do he does this all himself and he's absolutely passionate and willing and loves to explain and talk and teach people about a bunch of really cool stuff as well as he just has a and if you are interested in the kind of more macabre aspect of it just the sheer variety that he has is really cool i know a lot of places um only specifically do just kind of like the butterflies or um a small amount of like insects or maybe like a like a small mammal or something like that or two but he does just have a really cool just variety of specimens in general so if you guys please do go check him out go check out the store it's really cool really neat if you're into really kind of any branch of science and if you're feeling venturous you know try an insect or two see what your uh, pet reptiles are uh, see what you're missing out what they seem to be snacking on every day well hope you're having a great day please check them out and we'll check you next time